Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I'm here to give a very short um, view, presentation of my heart about this issue, which I hold dear for a long, long time. Somewhere during the last 200,000 years, our connection to the planet has been lost. It is more likely that it was uh, it occurred during the Industrial Revolution and evolution of large-scale farming. Mankind continues to plunder and degrade the lungs of the planet, both on land and in the oceans, with crippling consequences. One of these lungs is the Amazon, where the eastern part of the Amazon has been a net carbon emitter since 2016. That means that the remaining forests are unable to capture carbon to keep pace with the rate of deforestation. Globally, around 15 billion trees are cut down every year. And if we continue at this rate, we risk reaching tipping points and entering dangerous feedback loops. God has said the Lord made all kinds of trees grow out of the ground in the Bible, it reminds us. And the trees are pleasing to look at and good for food. This is what God made trees for. Some of you have been to my resorts in Pankola, out in, in Gaia Island, in Sabah, Cameron Highlands, or Tanjung Jara, you will notice that every of my resorts has a naturalist. And when you touch these trees, you're almost touching eternity. And we're always teaching these naturalists to tell that children. What are these? These are God's oxygen machines. They are made so beautifully. I think if you, if you understand how ugly our oxygen machines are made by men during this COVID period, you understand we could never make anything beautiful, and yet it gives us oxygen. Yet we devastate them and chop them down without, without any conscience. Resulting temperatures increases are similar to the Richter scale for earthquakes. For each one degree warming, there is a correlating 7% increase in water vapor with exponential impacts and increasing extreme weather events. In 2021 alone, four records were broken. It's a stark reminder that global warming is not in the future, it is already here with us now. There are stern warnings from the Intergovernment Panel on Climate Change of Code Red already on 2021, and more dire warnings published this year about the consequences of inaction and warnings of now or never. Last month, we heard Antonio Guterres remind us, the world is a broken global energy system pending climate catastrophe. Partly in response to the recurring warnings, almost 90% of global economy, at least now, are covered by net zero targets. It is critical to protect forests and meadows on land and also in our seas. They not only sequester and store carbon, but they actually cool down the planet. We may need to focus even more on oceans and wetlands Coastal ecosystems such as mangroves, tidal marshes, and seagrass meadows act as deep carbon reservoirs. In fact, seagrass uh, sequesters carbon 30 times more than trees. And we have removed quite a lot of our seagrass due to development, and a lot of our animals and all these rare dugongs and all that has also gone with them. So we must remember all of these things and start to protect them again, the mangroves and these seagrass. These habitats cover just 6% of the Earth's surface, but hold as much as 30% of the stored carbon. Oceans produce around 70% of the planet's oxygen and holds 90% of all life on Earth. While disruptive technologies are increasingly being exploited for nature, and agricultural-based solutions to support emission reductions, climate change and risk mitigation, we need vision. 
We need very bold leadership, and we need zealous activism at the highest levels. I suspect very few people at the end of the 19th century would have believed that the horses would almost completely disappear from the streets of their towns and cities and be replaced with automobiles. While horse manual was the problem in their streets then, we today have piled even more harmful pollution than this dung to every corner of our earth. Our future may well be powered by green oxygen and ammonia, small molecular reactors, renewable energy and electric vehicle, both on land and in the air, I very much hope. It appears that we are moving away from the typical emission reduction purchase agreement format to a more dynamic and transparent ecosystem. However, the issues of integrity, transparency, and reliability in carbon projects remain key challenges. And homegrown exchanges in Malaysia and Singapore are moving to confront these issues along with international bodies. What appears clear in the evolution of the market, carbon markets is that because carbon projects and credits are not fungible, they differ sometimes vastly in quality, in characteristics, and in value. Mm. One critical question is whether the cost of removal projects such as direct air capture and carbon capture use and storage can come down fast enough and whether we are able to scale fast enough to help avoid a climate catastrophe. The lead times for reforestation are far, far lengthier and investment in nature-based solutions still have a significant role. We'll need to run in parallel. There needs to be continued massive investments in permanent removals where we can put CO2 back into the lithosphere. The Frontier Fund is one such initiative with around almost a billion US dollars committed so far by Alphabet and McKinsey. An example of how fit in tariffs, carbon finance mechanisms, technology advancements have stimulated investments in renewable energies evidenced by the acceleration of the solar PV where equipment prices have fallen around 80% in the last 10 years. It took the global economy community 70 years to reach one terawatt of installed capacity from the installation of the first panels in the 1950s. But this number will quickly double to two terawatts in just the next four years. And may accelerate further with the current energy and fuel crisis. Another example of how technology will help solve climate crisis is the cost of growing a burger in a lab, which used to cost a staggering $325,000 per kilogram in 2012. This has now fallen to $11 per kilogram. But I need to emphasize again, all of this needs to be executed with a level of integrity that does not leave room for error. The stakes are far higher and the con consequences potentially devastating and irreversible. YTL has been in the carbon consulting business since 2007. And when we acquired SV Carbon, and we have remained in this business throughout the volatility of the clean development mechanism era into the emergence of the voluntary markets and now into the era of carbon taxes, border adjustment mechanisms and targets such as net zero, science-based targets, and carbon neutrality. Whilst we saw the certified emission reduction certificate prices under the clean development mechanism rise to $20 per metric ton, and in 2012 fall to a ridiculous 99% for just 20 cents per metric ton. The fundamentals look quite different this time, and there will hopefully be less Mortality. Regardless, we are still committed to decarbonization both for the YTL group and for clients of the YTL SV Carbon. We have set a carbon neutral target in the whole YTL group by 2050 for YTL group and varying aims of net zero and carbon neutral targets for our business units in cement, power, water, 
property and hotels. You can see some of those in the chat. Some are set at 2030, Wessex and Saraya and other initiatives. We are active member of the Industry Working Group of Malaysia's Voluntary Carbon Market and a participant in global exchanges, bringing transparency and integrity to the carbon market, such as climate impact exchange and air carbon exchange. Under YTL's business units, we have installed waste heat recovery systems in our cement plants already, and we will do much, much more. But we have recently announced that we will be building a 500 megawatt green energy data center in Johor, Malaysia. And, and we already signed C, C Group and also um, GDS, the biggest uh, data center uh, from China who are involved in already signed to have almost 200 megawatts with us in this place in Kulai. So we are very encouraged by doing the right thing and companies committing uh, green energy and, uh, and data centers with green energy. So far, we have planted almost 200,000 mangroves and sea pines and rehabilitated seagrass meadows in Malaysia, Indonesia. And we have in initiated rewilding in the UK as part of West, Wessex Waters Biodiversity Action Plan. We see nature-based solutions and other removal technologies as cornerstones of our decarbonization strategy and will continue to be part of protecting and restoring nature's precious ecosystem and lungs of planet both on land and in the sea. The climate both divides us and unites us globally. Our local actions have global impacts. For example, a geothermal plant in Iceland capturing CO2 indirectly impacts islands in the Maldives. And the deforestation in the Amazon affects rainfalls in Kenya and Zimbabwe. The success of the Montreal Protocol tackling the threat to the ozone layer may be put down to the fact that it recognize common but differentiated responsibilities for the developed and developing countries. The Montreal Protocol was signed for every, by every country in the world, making it the only treaty ever to be universally ratified and is a great example of international environmental cooperation. We need to keep our open minds, we need to keep our minds open and our hearts and our borders open. The climate change crisis is creating challenges and opportunities not seen since the dawn of the Industrial Revolution and the advent of the internet. And we need innovation, creativity, and bold vision. But what we need most of all is action. Winston Churchill reminds us, however beautiful the strategy, you should occasionally look at the results. And when it comes to climate change, we know that the problem is we know what the problem is, we know what the solution is, and we have the market mechanisms to guide us there. All that remains is the strong will and the conviction to dedicate our time and resources to implement them with integrity, with sign-based approaches, and with faith. We have a narrowing window and we need to act now. Before I finish, I'd like to show you a simulator uh, design by Massachusetts Institute of Technology on the impact you will have with the various options of uh, what we are all talking about, the different institutions around the world from banks to all of us in different sectors trying to do everything we can and what is the impact uh, if we do something or we don't do something with this particular solution. Let's have a look at that. First of all, I think a lot of people talk about coal. Uh, banks don't want to finance coal anymore, and uh, let's reduce coal, and let's not subsidize coal. In fact, let's put a very heavy tax on coal. Now, let's do it. Let's shift coal to be very heavily subsidized. Now, you can see the impact has dropped only 0.2 degrees. We are talking about the uh, temperature increasing to 3.6 degrees by 20 2,100 if we do, don't, don't do anything, all right? But if we do something now, and we actually put the highest tax on coal to prevent the usage of coal, right? Uh, now, it will impact, as you can see, the needle moves, but not that much. 
the next thing being talked about is we invest a lot on the renewables. A lot. Let's subsidize renewables, all right? Let the government subsidize renewables. So let's put renewables to the max. You can see it only the needle moves only 0.1 degree. If every government subsidizes, all right, first put a high tax on coal, and then subsidizes uh, renewables to the max, we will still only drop by 0.1 degrees. It's still the needle's not moving uh, very fast. In the transportation area, everybody talks about transportation uh, being one of the source of pollution. So, okay, make every transport efficient from cars to trains to aeroplanes to uh, all transportation equipments to its maximum, including buildings. And what will be the impact? Right? Let's heavily increase that energy efficiency to 100%. You can see the needle still doesn't drop very much. Still doesn't drop very much, right? Let's electrify everything that can be electrified, okay? Which is another big topic today. Let's, let's do that. Electric cars, electric everything, okay? And you can see it drops, but again, not very much. Let's stop deforestation, 100%. All governments drop. It will move again, the needle, but not very much, 0.1 degree, yeah? Let's start immediately a forestation. Replant every single forest that has been chopped down. Let's replant it to the max. It moves a little, little bit more, but only by 0.2 degree. As you can see, if we do all of this now, right, the temperature will only drop by 0.8 degree over uh, in, in the year. 2,100. You're talking about trillions and trillions of dollars being poured in, and the impact is still not very significant. This is pretty scary, all right? But let's look at the carbon price. If we move the carbon price from where it is today to the maximum level, like say Sweden. Sweden is having a price of 187 uh, ton today per metric ton. If we move that, and it didn't impact Sweden's uh, economy very badly by having a high carbon tax. In fact, it moves the whole Sweden into a very green area, etc. and they are benefiting, the first to benefit from that, and the people, the first to benefit from that. And you can see the impact quite shifts quite a lot, right? See, from 2.8, it drops to 2.2. What, what I'm trying to say is maybe we should be doing the high carbon tax first. I think we should put a high carbon tax of Sweden on all countries. Only then would the acceleration of this will actually happen. If we do slowly, slowly solve all this forestation, deforestation, and take our time, we may not have the immediate impact. The solutions are simple. If the carbon tax can be raised high, and we all live, like we can live in a COVID world, we can live in a high carbon tax world, our immediate children's generation will definitely benefit from that. It will definitely force investment in green, investment, everything, transportation, energy efficiency. It will accelerate this huge amount. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is what I want to leave with you. This, this uh, simulator is available to all uh, uh, roads You can go and simulate and play with yourself the different alternatives. What I don't want this world is to be in, uh, to be uh, living in a world on every day and not thinking that they have done quite a lot by stopping frustration and we take time to do it, etc. By doing everything we need and must do today, is still not enough unless the carbon tax is high immediately. I want to leave this thought behind for all who are deliberating on this issue so that you, you will understand that that should be their priority. That will lead to the others being accelerated. Hopefully, we will be able to bring the temperature down by quite a significant uh, amount, by uh, 2,100. With this, I leave you. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. God bless all of you. Thank you.